boys basketball action between the Burlington Greyhounds and Muscatine Muskies. Notice I did not lead with Mississippi Athletic Conference action as Burlington defected from the MAC last year. So this is just a regular old out of conference game between two river rivals. This is the pregame show presented by Muscatine Power and Water on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. I'm Joel Krausar. I'll be joined a little bit later by my partner Terry Youngbauer as the Muskies face off against the Greyhounds. The Greyhounds come in tonight 7-6 and six on the year. The Muskies are 0-9. And, and we'll break down this game a little bit more, but we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more Muskie basketball on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Affordable metal manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable Metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable Metal Manufacturing. Our business is rolling. Ice Cream and Grill, 609 West 5th Street, Wilton, Iowa. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Hi. And welcome back. It's pregame presented by Muscatine Power and Water here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. I'm Joel Krausar. We are looking forward to this matchup as the Burlington Greyhounds will face off against the Muscatine Muskies. The Greyhounds led by Amarion Davis, a senior guard at 14.4 points per game and 6.4 rebounds per game. The 6-2 senior leading the way for Burlington. Also leading from, uh, for Burlington, Marquise Lewis, the 6'4 junior. He's at 11.8 points per game and 4.7 rebounds. And leading the way for the Muskies, just by a hair, Dante Lee at 10.2 points per game. He's followed closely behind the freshman, Luke Wieskamp, at 10 points per game. And both Luke and Dante leading the rebounding statistics for the Muskies. I'm joined by my partner, Terry Youngbauer, who's fresh off the bus, off of a, off a coaching uh, venture up at Central DeWitt. How'd it go for you guys tonight? Well, we came out on the short end of the stick, but the kids played really well. They played very hard, and I'll tell you what, Central DeWitt has a really nice team. Um, so I think what you're going to see, you know, we've got two really good back-to-back -back classes, our freshman class and this eighth grade class, and so does Central DeWitt. So I think you're going to see both those teams battling it out, uh, out toward the top in a few years here. You know, and Central DeWitt, the addition to the Mississippi Athletic Conference after the defection from Burlington a few years ago. And so it's the, it's the new wave. We trade out purple and uh, gray for purple and gold of the Central DeWitt Sabres. But uh, like I, I mentioned it just before you arrived, uh, this is an old school rivalry. My my vintage, this was always cake auction night with Burlington coming to town. And that was kind of the traditional matchup for the cake auction, which is February 4th. Uh, ne never any love lost between the Burlington Greyhounds and the Muscatine Muskies. And uh, it's just the, the rivalry continues. No, there's some tremendous history and tradition between these two schools. And you indicated, I, I felt the same way. Burlington was, was you know, one of our biggest rivals in, in every sport you know, it, it wasn't just basketball absolutely and i i tell you what it was we had some great games some great battles and i i loved going down to burlington i love that trip but you know i like their their arena um you know, just just it was always a great game. They always had Hawaiian night. Yes. And we went down there for yes. basketball. <laughs> yeah, and, they, and their tradition always, too, for intro, introducing the starting lines was always the Bulls theme and turn out the lights right. and the spotlights. So that was kind of neat. 
But, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it's a shame that we're not in the same conference anymore because, you know, those rivalries really mean something. The, uh, the, I, I echo the sentiments about their gym. The only gym I ever scored in double figures. My sophomore year at Burlington, I had 12 points. So uh, the, the only double figure out. Awesome. You'd like to go back to Burlington. Well, now. I have to thank you for that because you called up C.J. Barkema from our team to the varsity. I, yeah. So I got a few more minutes at the, at okay. the low post. Hey. So. <laughs> When one door opens and Absolutely. Or, or closes, another one opens and yours open. Brian Shell and I got the oh, bulk of CJ Barker with the minutes. As I'm, we sure, get, I'm sure we held on to CJ too. We probably didn't oh, get back, did we? Yeah, no, and then as you should have. As we get ready for the starting lineups, we're still uh, we we don't have the starting lineups available to us yet as the scoreboard. Is, is not working uh, on, the, on that regard for us, and we did not get them delivered to us. We're anticipating the standard starting lineup for the Muskies presented by Bear of Muscatine, which is Braden Hufford, the senior guard, um, along with Sam Emmert, the junior forward, six foot three forward, Dante Lee, the senior guard, and then Luke Wieskamp, the freshman forward, Along with, we, we we're not sure who we're going to see, whether it's Diamond Craig Look, or Miles Melendez. Looks like Diamond Craig. Uh, yeah, so we're sitting down there with the with the kids on the bench right now. So we'll get Diamond then to start the junior, the six four junior. And for the Greyhounds, number one Nate Spear, the six one senior, along with number two Amarion Davis, their leading scorer. Number three Tice Burdishofer, a junior, or excuse me, a senior guard. And then number 21, Merkish Lewis Jr. starting at forward at six foot four. So those are your starting lineups presented by Bear of Muscatine. And again, Burlington coming off uh, a really good outing against Assumption. Played them very close. This is a seven and six team that uh, has has surprised some people this year. And uh, the Muskies, who while we know they're 0 and 9, they also had a pretty good outing against the Knights. And we've seen them play Bettendorf very well. They had a tough draw with the number two team in the state, Pleasant Valley, the last time we saw them. But we're excited to see what they bring to the table tonight. And now we'll rise as they honor America with the national anthem. As we prepare for tip-off, again, pregame show presented by Muscatine Power and Water. Joel, you mentioned uh, number 21 for Burlington, Marquise Lewis Jr. Boy, his father, I coached against his dad, and was he a heck of a player. I, I thought that name oh, sounded familiar. Outstanding athlete, not just a ba great basketball player, but a great athlete, multi-sport athlete. And if his son is anything like his dad, he's going to be a handful tonight because his dad was a heck of a player. It's one of the things, you know, throughout the season, me calling multiple sports, you get to know a lot of these kids in the conference, but with Burlington no longer in the conference, we don't see them in other sports. So it's a good look, right. kind of my first look at the Greyhounds. They exactly. are in black. Yeah, they've got different uniforms. <laughs> I'm not used to, used to them in that color. Muscatine wins the opening tip, and Braden Hufford will bring it up for the Muskies. Man-to-man -man defense here from the Greyhounds. Wieskamp 
with the jumper. That shot's blocked. They switched that ball screen and they challenged Luke's three-pointer there. Jackson Carlson with the block. Here's Lewis. Backs to Burtishofer. There's Davis, their leading scorer. Three-pointer, that's good. Nate Spear knocks it down from long range. And now, trap, press. Might have got away with a walk there, I think. Muscatine did a nice job handling the pressure. Crahey back to Wieskamp. That three-pointer is good. Three-pointer presented from First National Bank of Muscatine. What you really got to like about that, Joel, is his first shot was blocked, but he, he didn't show any hesitation. Oh, absolutely. Davis gets to the rim after going baseline. And the Muskies will inbound. It's like a one-two-two three-quarter court trap, Joel. Good job getting the ball to the middle by Muscatine. Now it looks like they've switched to his own defense. And Wieskamp for three again. Luke Wieskamp with six early points. Great start for the freshman. Lewis, back to Davis. Davis for three, no good. Rebound by Dante Lee. He will push the tempo. Lee with the crossover. Gets his own rebound. Throws it off the Greyhound defender, and it will stay with the Muskies. Great God, individual they, effort yeah, there. Yeah, it was. And not only the effort, but the presence to know that, yep. hey, you know, it's my only option to throw it out off this guy's is a leg, and he did. Great job by Dante. Offered inbounds to Emmer. Now, you've been around. I, I don't know all of the officials' names. I've seen that we've had this crew many times before, and I, I have a, a very high opinion of this I crew. wanted to mention my great friend Cliff Hinton is the lead official here th with this crew. He's a tremendous guy. Great official, but a tremendous man. And I was going to mention him in our pregame show, and I didn't get a chance to. So I thought, well, sometime I'll do it, but you beat me to the punch. Yeah, this, is, this is one and, of the premier and, crews and in Southeast a, Iowa. Yes, and it is a tremendous crew. So we're going to get a good ball game out of those guys tonight, that's for sure. Cliff has been around forever, ever. Great guy, talks to the kids and, and, you know, talks to the coaches. He's just willing to, you know, explain a call to you. Lewis has his shot blocked by Wieskamp. And now Muscatine on the run out, turns it over. And now the Greyhounds speed down the course as Jackson Carlson gets the lay-in. Nice unselfish pass from Rakesh Lewis Jr. for the layup there for Burlington. Crahey, good adjustment to not Get called for the foul. He kicks it out to Wieskamp for three. No good. Rebound Lewis. We're doing a great job breaking the press tonight, Joel. Very much under control. Lewis with the pull up. Rebounded by Crahey. Call the carry on Dante Lee. So it'll be a turnover. You know, I don't dispute the call, but you just don't see that call very often today. <laughs> you know, at all levels, yeah. guys are carrying the ball regularly. Yeah, and you just it. don't see a call very often. Muscatine with a man-to-man -man look. Here's Carlson with the Greyhounds. Now Lewis for three. No good. Carlson gets the rebound. And the putback. Four points now for Carlson. You know, Carlson just stayed with it, didn't, never gave up on the play, and followed his shot. Emmert has it at the top of the key. So Burlington's going to a zone look out of the press. Looks like a 1-2-2 two, two or 3-2. Luke's running the baseline here. Lewis gets the steal out top. And Emmert stays with it. He's going to get called for the foul, but that was about as good of an effort as you can have to get to the ball. He got him with his body. It was a good yeah, call. But yeah. It was, a, it was a, actually a good foul. You know, make him earn the two at, at the free throw line. 
I mean, he certainly was probably going to convert that. So Muscatine calls a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here. Finish your point, Coach. Especially if, if you know, early in, the, early in the game and you don't have foul trouble. Now, if Sam had two fouls or something, right. I would say let him go. But, you know, he had no fouls. and Let's see if he can make some free throws. Yeah, you mentioned the officiating crew, and I'll tell you what, you know, I was talking to the two officials doing the eighth grade game tonight. They were really good, too. And, and uh, there's just a shortage of officials all yep. over. So if there's some young guys out there or gals, yeah. because there's a lot of great female officials that are getting into it as well, you know, we need great officials, you know. So we need young people to, you know, take an interest in it. And I'll tell you what, I, you know, it's a thankless job yeah, some days. And you hope that people understand it's not easy to do. If, if you've never done it before, I recommend trying it one time, and then you'd have a different perspective on it. And I am it. guilty of it as a younger coach. I was much harder on officials than I probably should have been. Well, it, it's easy to do because you're so wrapped up, and people are passionate about the game and their kids and their team and stuff. But it's it's a really difficult job, I'll tell you. As Lewis misses the first free throw, which the analytics folks would tell you, that's a good foul by him. Sam, yeah, it paid off. Makes the second. Extends the lead to four. With just under four minutes to play here in the first quarter. I love how we're getting the ball to the middle against this pressure. Emmert gets to the rim, blocked by Lewis. Good block. You know, that was a great drive, but just even a better defensive play. You got to tip your hand to, uh, to Marquise Lewis. Spear with a long three. He's hit his average for the night. He's a six-point-per-game scorer. He's got six. Let's hope he's done for the night then, Joel. <laughs> if you're just joining us, Joel Krausar and the longtime Muskie coach, Terry Youngbauer, on the call. As that three long, but Lee gets the steal. They're going to call an offensive foul on Crahey. That was a close play. All charging blocks are close calls, but I think what got uh, Diamond there was he kind of dipped his shoulder a little yeah. bit as he was going into the basket there. I, you know, and most offensive players are taught to draw contact, so, I mean, I can't fault him. Uh, it just didn't go his way. Good hustle back by Lewis to actually find the position to make it close. As a coach, you love kids who are willing to take a charge. Yeah, especially so. your leading scorer. Absolutely. I mean, there's a guy who's Absolutely. doing the little things on the defensive end, not just focusing on his offensive game. It sets a tone for your team. And there's a great pass by Davis. Finds Carlson down low. See above his scoring average, Joe? Was that Carlson you said? Yeah, that's his Carlson, average? yeah. No, Carlson, no, he's not oh, quite no, there. No. Car Carlson's no. eight. Spears okay, the other, six. Spears, Spears is our guy. Okay, I got confused those two guys. Yeah, so Burlington finding some points yeah. from kinda, their role players tonight. quietly extended their lead. There's Spears. Spear for three, no good. Davis gets another rebound. Here's Lewis on the shot fake. And he'll get to the rim and have a three-point opportunity from the free throw line. Those second uh, chance points, you know, they're getting an extra possession with that long rebound. Those three-pointers tend to come off long, and, and it did, and Burlington sure took advantage of that. They move the ball nicely and end up at the free throw line for a three-point play opportunity. Carlson will check out and Reyes will check in. Diamond Crahey now back into the game for Dante Lee. Lee picked up his first foul. Connor Christensen's in the musky lineup. It's good to see. See if Connor can steady the ship a little bit here. For Hufford us. gets the rebound. Christensen to Emmert. Crahey with a nice pass to Christensen. That jumper's no good. Rebounded by Diamond. Hufford for three. That's good. Three-pointer, Braden Hufford. Great extra pass from Connor Christensen there. He, you know, he had a good shot himself, but Braden had an even better shot. Another first National Bank of Muscatine three-pointer. There's a blocked shot by Luke Wieskamp. Rebounded by Christensen. An underrated part of Luke's game is his defense and is a rim protector. I love when a kid can block a shot without fouling like that. And he kept the ball in play, no. too. Gave us possession. Turnover. Okay, I think Sam made a good decision there. Let, yeah. him, let him go. I mean, he made an effort, but he did not foul. 
Uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to see him pick up that second foul this early in the quarter. 1-2-2 two, two press again here from Burlington. The lead is 10. Now Muscatino reset the offense. Two-pointer no good by Christensen. Rebound, Spear. Spear finds Reyes. I think Connor had him on the arm there, had a hold of him on the uh, rebound. So that foul is going to be on Christensen. 14 fouls now against the Muskies. Burlington yet to crack the team foul list. Jaime Martinez will check in. We'll check in for Christensen. That pass is deflected nicely by Hufford. And now we'll get on the fast break. And Hufford will go to the free throw line. Nice job by Braden being aggressive. You know, come up with the steal and not, you know, don't be satisfied with just pulling it out. He went right to the basket. Veteran move by the senior. Played a lot of varsity basketball. He started some games as a sophomore. First free throw good. Got the nice shooter's roll there. Had a nice follow through. Lee will check in for Wieskamp. Looks getting a well-earned rest. He, he, he deserves it. Boy, he's worked hard. Had a good first quarter. Second free throw, no good. Rebounded by Lewis. Under 30 seconds to go in the quarter. I would assume at this point Burlington's going to go for a last shot. It's like they're holding for one, Joel. That's the team trying to get out far enough to get the call at the five second clock and count it. Lewis, <laughs> running three pointer, good. I think he thought he had more I'm not, time. Yeah, I'm not sure if he knew the exact time of the clock because that sure wasn't the kind of shot you're really <laughs> looking for. But it went in. Nevertheless, it went down and oh, that'll take man. the lead to 12 for Burlington. We'll take a 30 second break. We'll be back with second quarter action on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf. And welcome back to Muscatine High School as the Muskies trail Burlington by 12 here to begin the second quarter. In the first three minutes of the first quarter, Muscatine going shot for shot with Burlington. What I was impressed with was the defensive rebounding in the first three minutes. But after the timeout that was called early, it seemed like the, the rebounding intensity from Burlington really amped up on the offensive glass. Yeah, Burlington got a couple of you know, second chance opportunities there and converted. And, you know, they quietly built this 12 point lead. Yeah. I mean, that, that last shot there's big, obviously, you know, gives you momentum going here. In the, and they get the ball. But, you know, they, they quietly just built that lead. Some subs in here for the Greyhounds. Dayton Walsh joins Murkish Lewis. There's Reyes with the ball. Burlington's also. running a little flex offense right now. That baseline screen and then a down screen on the top. J.J. Martin with the ball. Kind of a popular offense that a lot of teams used to run and some still do. Being very patient in this. Makes you fight through a lot of screens. You really got to work hard on defense. Walsh for three. No good. Rebounded by Crahey. Camp. Martinez still in the lineup for the Muskies. It's Hufford, Martinez, Lee, uh, Crahey, 
and Wieskamp for the Muskies. Dante Lee gets to the rim and he's gonna get a chance for a three point play. I'm sure the Burlington coach was not happy that Dante was able to get to the basket and get in the lane. That's one of the things coaches hate to see you give up the paint, but Dante did a great job and followed through with his shot and he's at the line. Misses the shot. Wieskamp tried to get the save off the Greyhound player. Now Burlington looks to run. Lewis finds Reyes. And Reyes gets the two. It's a nice patient pass. You know, he didn't rush it there and he waited until the kid was open and found him for a layup. I'm impressed with uh, Marquise Lewis Jr. Wieskamp gets the and one. Luke goes to the free throw line. He's got eight points leading the way for the Muskies. He's really having a good first half. You know, and I'm sure he's a guy that's a, a marked man. You know, uh, opposing coaches at this stage of the season know right. all about him, and they know about him from, from his name in the past, too. So he's a good player, and I'm sure he's, he's drawn the better defenders on these other teams and doing a great job. Martinez is going to get called for the foul. As Jaime was battling for the rebound. Lead is still 10. Joe at 6'5. He and Crahey. Crahey's 6'4. They're the length, kind of the post defenders for the Muskies. As Marquise pulls up from the elbow. Smooth jumper for Marquise Lewis. Martinez for three. I just really love how we're getting the ball in the middle against that press. Cray, he got a good offensive rebound. Now Hufford with the runner, no good. And unable to get the offensive board. Muscatine's battling. Sure this can't, yeah, sure can't fault his effort. Boy, he was, you know, kept kept after one-handed even. Yeah. You know. Tell you, like I said, I'm really impressed how we're breaking the pressure. We're getting the ball in the middle of the floor and, and finding open players on the wings, and leading to good shots. Lewis with the jumper, no good. Rebound to Wieskamp. There's going to be a foul on Carlson. To that point, you know, the pressure, the press of the pressure is there to create turnovers and create havoc. Neither team really turning the ball over. Both teams protecting the ball. The, the changes of possession are coming off of shot, missed shots, not, not turnovers and fouls. And it's just as I say that, there's a almost turnover. That old announcer jinx. <laughs> it's real. It is real. Now Dante Lee. He's defended by J.J. Martin. I think we're going to get Martin with the foul. Just a little too much body on the Burlington player on the defensive end there. I think it was certainly the right call. Five team fouls now. As that's the second foul on J.J. Martin. Hufford will inbound underneath the musky basket. Crahey, nice job off the set play. Love the out of bounds, but that was a little pick the picker. Diamond set a pick and then received a pick and was wide open. Spear for three, no good. Rebound by Hufford. This is a big possession, Joel. We can get it under 10. Muscatine trying to get under to a single digit deficit. Under five minutes to play in the first half. Here's Sam Emmert. A little shot fake, fade away, good. <laughs> Former Hawkeye assistant coach Rich Rocker would have loved that little show the ball and then oh. go the other way move there by Sam Emmert. Probably would have learned that at Hawkeye Band Aid. Yes, camp. absolutely. Just a few more Wade Looking Bill pump fakes, and we're all in business. Those were great camps, Joel. God. We were so lucky as a oh, community. Oh, wonderful band, opportunity though. for Muscatine kids and Mustang community, the Iowa Hawkeye coaches and players coming down here and putting on that camp for I don't know how many years, 20 some years, I'm yeah, sure. My whole childhood. Yeah. I, I miss that. I wish they still would do that. You know, Hufford will bring the ball up for the Muskies.
Great hands by the Burlington defensive player there. Shot blocked by Hufford. So with four minutes to go here in the second quarter, just over four minutes. The lead is eight for Burlington. Almost a five second call. Marquise Lewis to Spears. There's Davis. The leading scorer for the Greyhounds, Marion Davis has five, but it's been a quiet five. He had the long three as time it was expiring in the end of the first quarter. Other than that, just one bucket. It was the second basket of the game. And that drive there, it just looked like he lost his footing a little bit. Just didn't seem like he had his footwork down there and stumbled. He breaks the pressure again. And Emmer does turn it over. I missed the memo. It's plaid shirt night in the student section. Maybe we can catch that oh, in the Arties I see that. fan cam. I see that. I don't know if I even have a plaid shirt anymore. Oh, I bet if you look deep might, enough in your yeah, closet, sure. Joel, you got something in there. If not, I'll borrow you one. <laughs> I got several. Push off. Or excuse me, blocking call on Dante Lee. The next foul against the Muskies will put the Greyhounds at the free throw line for the one-on-one bonus. Coach Torelli, I think, is, is voicing what I kind of could see from my angle. He wanted a little push off with the elbow there. Yeah. You know, Merkish Lewis Jr., strong move to the basket there. And I'll tell you what, that was one of the trademarks of his dad. His dad was really strong physically. And, uh, boy, he just went up through the contact. I think he got fouled twice by yeah. two different people there. And he still <laughs> followed through with the shot and converted. Great first step. Too. Yes, just yes. Very, so quick. very quick. Very quick. And he covers ground. Yeah. He gets somewhere. Makes the free throw. Extends the lead to 11. Back up to 11. It was just what? Seven, Seven. Just about yeah. a minute ago. Darnell, Darnell Thompson, Thompson yeah. in for the Muskies. Wieskamp fouled on the floor. Strong take by Luke. Another nice out of bounds play there. It just didn't work out, but got a good look. Crazy heads up, gets the steal, and it'll turn it over. Can't fault Diamond's effort, but just got going a little bit too fast. Got excited. I think he saw opportunity ahead and lost the basketball. Sometimes you got to just get yourself under control so you can make the play. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Bobby Knight always had a great saying, be quick, but don't be in a hurry. And I think Diamond was in a hurry there. Yeah, you know, it's, it is plaid night in the student section to quote space balls. I think Burlington was trying to go plaid there. Air Muskie was trying to go plaid. Maybe he got distracted by the shirts <laughs> even, too. Possible. If you don't get the reference, go watch space balls. I never saw that movie, oh. so I don't. The, the, the top speed okay. of, the, of the space cruiser is they went plaid. It's a, it's a funny ah. joke. It's kind of a... And now the new Tesla super speed engine is called the plaid engine, which I think is hilarious. It comes from space balls. As my Bellbrook's knowledge is serving me no good here, the lead's still at 11 here for the Greyhounds. Both teams had good possessions there. Luke had a nice shot fake and put the ball on the floor and hit a mid-range jumper. And Burlington took it strong to the basket. I'd say both teams are pretty happy with those possessions. Strong take from Wieskamp again. He'll get the bucket. Strong with the left hand. He's got 12 here in the first half. 12 with only two three-pointers. So he's scoring from all over. You can just see he's getting better and better all the time. That runner good from J.J. Martin. That was what we call a rainbow jumper. <laughs> and 
Emmert's going to draw the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line for the one and one, as that foul will put Muscatine in the bonus. You know, the Burlington defender, he kind of bailed Sam out because I think Sam lost his footwork. And yeah. I think he was almost traveling. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're the Burlington coach, you probably have upset that, you know, you, your player put your hands on him and fouled him. So call that a bailout. Misses the front end, rebounded by Davis. Carlson unable to catch the pass. That was a tough, that would have been a, a great catch. Just tried to thread the needle. It was there. Now Muscatine will slow it down a little bit. Just over a minute to play here in the first half. It's Thompson, Hufford, now Hufford drives baseline, no good, rebound Davis. Thompson, Emmert, Christensen, Hufford, and Wieskamp on the floor for the Muskies. J.J. Martin for three, and he's been a real spark plug. He's got five points coming in off the bench. Nice assist from uh, Lewis. He took the extra pass there. They moved the ball well on that possession. I always say good passing leads to good shots, and that certainly did for Burlington in that possession. Embert for three. No good. Rebound, Lewis. We've gone a little bit cold, Joel, the end of half here. Good closeout by Emmert. Spear, runner, no good. Rebound, Thompson, 30 seconds to go. And the offensive foul on Darnell Thompson. <laughs> really fantastic job by Martin to get back and get set and draw the contact. He didn't get a lot of his body. Must have just got enough yeah. from Cliff's vantage point there on that call there. Um, some of that, too, is you've got 195 pounds of Darnell yes. Thompson and maybe 165 yes. pounds. No, I, I think you're right. I think Martin. you make a good point there, Joel. Um, the contact I, force seems yeah, more violent than it may I, have been. I think in the official's eyes, he probably felt he just didn't try to do enough to avoid contact. As Lewis with a strong take there. And that was a great – and Martin was 100% set. His body was yeah, completely yeah. at rest. So but, but he, that three is good by Braden Hufford. Oh, officials waving it off, Joel. Well, he definitely got that off. They're going to have a conversation, I think. Because from our vantage point, which I was right in line with the clock and the shooter, it looked like it clearly went off. This is not reviewable. This is an official's consensus thing. So we'll just... And they count the basket. Okay. Yep, the, clo the closer official felt he had a clearer look at it, and they are counting the basket. You know, you alluded to this officiating crew, Joel, and I think they just backed yeah. you up. Yeah. They got together and talked about it. Two officials saw something different. Yeah. The three of them got together. They didn't rush it, and then and they did what they thought was right in the end, and, and uh, that's I'm how sure it, they made the right call. You, you said you had a good view of it. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to work. I mean, you're not going to be perfect every time. But that's why your work as a team. It's not three guys officiating the game. It's a whole unit working together. And, and we're going to let our whole unit take us to a quick break, a 30-second break, and we'll be right back with uh, some halftime extravaganza. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. And we are back. It's halftime here at Muscatine High School, the Muscatine Lawn and Power halftime show as the Musky Boys trail Burlington 38 to 25. As it's halftime, the dance team is performing. And coach, big bucket that they did count uh, by Braden Hufford there at the end. Is that the momentum that you need to come into this game? Well, I'll tell you, you, you just don't know at this point, but that certainly could come back to be a very big basket. I mean, you know, 13, being down 13 looks a lot better than 16. Yeah. Yep. And the other thing, it's just, I think you pointed out, it's just momentum. Right. Know, it gets a little juice in you, and, you know, you feel excited about what you just did there. That's a big shot. So let's hope, you know, Muscatine can capitalize on that and uh, bring that to the second half. 
and it's really been a battle of field goal percentage. Neither team turning the ball over at a high rate. Neither team, you know, really getting into any individual foul trouble. A couple players have two fouls. No one's got that 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 detrimental third first half foul. But Burlington's just made a few more shots, and some of that's been they've been able to get into the lane a little bit more. Yeah, they have some nice athletes. I'll tell you, I've been very impressed with Marquise Lewis Jr. Um, and, and Luke Wieskamp's had a nice game for Muscatine in the first half too. So, you know, both teams. Uh, some of their leaders offensively are stepping up and playing the way they're capable of playing. And now we're going to turn it over to PA announcer Roger Bates as they announce the Next Level Muscatine program. Life lessons and values such as character, teamwork, discipline, respect, and sportsmanship. Terrence Watson serves as the director for Next Level, and Spencer Lloyd is Next Level's head trainer. A third grade team is coached by Luke Phelps, Tony Hollenbaugh, and Trevor Ruckles. Fourth grade team is coached by Nate Randleman, Clay Dillon, and Chris Neenhaus. Our fifth grade team is coached by Clay Marin and Dylan Main. The sixth grade team is coached by Mike Wiley, Cody Staker, and Brad Roth. Seventh grade team is coached by Cruz Vasquez and Terrence Watson. And the eighth grade team is coached by Brandon Welsh. Big hand for all of our future Muskies. Here's the, the future Muskies as they were their teams and coaches were just announced. You know, that's such an important part of the development. You mentioned you know, a little bit, talking about your eighth grade group that you coached through the school. Some of those guys are out here tonight with this next level program as well. And we had Spencer Lloyd on earlier in the year talking a little bit more. He's one of the, the he's the head trainer for this organization. But if you want to grow the basketball at the varsity level, you need to have programs like this, as well as the fantastic programs we have through the Y. You've got to have kids developing the skills early on. Dribbling a basketball is not one of those things you can just figure out when you're 14, 15 years old. Yeah, all those programs you just mentioned all do their part, and it hopefully all comes together when these kids get to the high school level. But it's exciting for me because I'm seeing all these old players out there are coaching now. <laughs> yeah. I'd like, you know, it's great that they're, they're getting, getting into that and their kids, and I know they're excited to watch their kids, but it's great they're coaching their kids too. You know, Chris Nienhaus, Clay Dillon, you know, all kinds of guys out there. And, and I, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, I, I, I heard a rumor that my, my buddy Chris got a technical in the last tournament. <laughs> You know, we we got the story though. It was it, more of a logistics. It was, it was one of those where yeah, he, he was, was kind of <laughs> warned or something. He stood up just to coach a kid or something. It was. It, I think he's getting a lot of uh, uh, flack about it, you know. But <laughs> a lot a lot of fun teasing. That's all it is. But yeah, Chris is a great guy and uh, the principal at Susan Clark absolutely Junior High. So fantastic. He does a fantastic job as principal of that school too. I was so fortunate. In my last year before I retired, I got to work for him, and I thought that was the greatest thing that I got to work for a guy that I coached in basketball, and, and he's just, just a fantastic boss. He was a great leader as a player, and I can see that's why he's doing such a fantastic job as, as principal, Susan Clark. Multiple sport athlete, and now his kids are playing multiple sports here in the community. And it's good to see so many of these other these kids. Oh. Are, I see them on the baseball field. We see them, you know, in, in the swimming pool, they're, they're not just one sport athletes. Which is, I, that is something that's so important yes. to me. I know you push that a lot, Joel. You yeah, do, I you, mean, you promote I, that a lot. And not everybody does that, Joel. There's some coaches are, you know, they're a little bit more, uh, I don't know, selfish, I guess I, is the only word that comes to mind. You know, but, uh, I, you've always been, been uh, big about that. A lot of that comes from the household I grew up in. My father sure. being a sports medicine professional and seeing a lot of repetitive stress injuries on specialized athletes. Because um, they're not training their whole body, they're not. They, right. you, you can only, you only your body only has so many pitches in it. So you're you're either going to throw them exactly. all by the time you're 12, or you're going to space it out, and you're going to throw them by the time you're you know 21. And that's, and that's the whole concept of it. And, and I learned also as a as a small college football coach at the NAIA level, our head coach Steve Ryan, who is a North Scott graduate, he's the son of legendary track coach Deke Ryan. 
and he's a five-time NAIA National Coach of the Year. He's won three national championships in the last four years. One of the first things he told us to look at for recruits are what other sports do they play? Because we, we can teach them how to play football. Sure. They can learn a lot about how to lead and how to be a teammate Athletes, by the other sports compete, that they play. Yeah. All those things, exactly. Boy, you know, I, not to belabor the point, but, you know, I'm looking at some of those guys who are coaching their kids. Yeah, those kids are so fortunate, the coaching they're getting. Brandon Welsh, yeah. what an outstanding player <laughs> and coach he is, and these kids are getting coached by him. Yeah, you know, he, he was your successor as the varsity coach. Absolutely, tremendous coach. And you know what? I mean, won a national. I don't think most of these kids really won a national championship yep. in college. I mean, how many guys can say they won a national championship? But fantastic player, fantastic coach. You know, like we mentioned, Chris Clay, Trevor Ruckles is out there. I mean, Lucas Phelps. You know, all these guys. You know, so these kids are really getting outstanding well, coaching. And, and from guys who, who know how to play the game, these guys were great competitors. And the one thing that's so important, too, and we – and I, this is this is something I think you and I are both very passionate about with selecting coaching as part of our our volunteerism and part of our profession is that when you have a culture where not only is every coach you know somewhat like minded but they they they've learned the game in the same language so you don't have one coach calling with one thing and then the next year you're playing for a coach and they're saying the same thing, but they're saying it in a completely different lexicon. Absolutely. Termino it, it, terminology is they, important. The, yeah. the, the, the uptake and the ability to, to just create the muscle memory and sure. react sure. is so beneficial. And that's something that you know, I'm seeing at the baseball level. Uh, I'm, I just started coaching a team with one of my former teammates, Ray Sotelo. And the fact that we both called the things the exact same yeah. thing, so our players are hearing it the same right. way from both right. players. So important. And having a lot of these guys you know, play for you, They've grown up learning the game in the same way. I'm excited. You know, I didn't mention Nate Randall. Nate's a tremendous shooter. Hopefully these kids are, you know, taking pointers from him on how to shoot the basketball because, God, he could shoot the three his, and stretch the his floor His brother, for us. Matt, one of my classmates, could as well. I mean, okay. I think all the Randall. Yeah. I think back, you know, Tom and Doug, and those guys are great players. And it was fun I was playing pickup basketball. Those guys, they can play the game. They're great shooters, but they know how to play basketball too. Yeah, it's it's fun to see, and we're seeing that through. Uh, also, you know, Luke Wieskamp, the freshman for the Muskies, leading the way with 12 points. You know, countless hours at the Y shooting, but he's also playing other sports too. You know, and that's that's the other thing that's really important. And uh, uh, I have to give a shout out. I don't know if Joe's watching. He might be playing tonight. But my my oldest had a birthday over the weekend, and one of the gifts that my parents were able to secure was a custom autographed uh, Joe Wieskamp uh, piece of apparel. That's and really so cool. it was a big thing for my 11-year-old. Cool. Yes. And it was, you know, it was, it was handwritten out to him. And so That's it was, special. It's, uh, That's really so, special. So thanks, Joe, for that. And you yeah. made a, a big, already lifetime fan an even bigger fan. Tell you, the other nice thing, Joel, I'm getting to coach Brandon Welsh's son, Canton. Yeah. He's on my eighth grade basketball team. So great two kid, generations super coach, now. You're absolutely. Two generations. And that's been a thrill for me and just talking to Brandon about him. I you know, it's it's neat to kind of talk to Canton about some of the things his dad did and you know, talk to Brandon about the things Canton's doing and, and you know, it's just fun. Really fun. Really a thrill for me. That is your Muscatine Lawn and Power halftime show and second half action underway as the Greyhounds try to extend this 13-point lead, and they do on the first drive, as there's Amari on Davis going baseline. That was a nice little set play, Joel. They ran a little isolation, isolated Davis on that wing there, and he just took it baseline to the basket. Nice play for them coming out of the halftime break. So great halftime for the Muscatine Next Level Basketball Program. And now the Muskies try to take it to the next level in the second half here, and they turn it over with a good steal from Spears. Lewis finds Carlson, who gets the lay-in. You know, the only thing I don't like with Diamond went, ran by the basketball there. I always try to tell kids, don't run by the ball. You leave your teammates, you know. Now you're five on four. And, you know, he went for a steal. And it, it's a hard thing as a kid to know when should I gamble and do this. But if you, if you, you got to be certain that you can get a tip on that or get the steal. Because if you don't, you just leave your team, like I say, you're one man down. And, it led to a layup uh, for Burlington. Coach Torelli calls timeout. We're going to take a quick 30-second break. We'll be coming back after this. Affordable metal manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. 
We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable Metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable Metal Manufacturing. Our business is rolling. And welcome back. I see head varsity wrestling coach Scott Mock just emerged from the training room. As they finish up practice, we'll have wrestling for you on Thursday night. It's a triangular with Davenport North and Bettendorf coming into the gym. Some more musky wrestling action coming. And then the Mississippi Athletic Conference Wrestling Tournament on January 29th. We'll have the whole tournament for you here on the Pearl City Sports Network. Joel, I think that was a good timeout. You know, it was only 51 seconds into the quarter, but I think we really needed to settle things down and change the momentum a little bit there. Hufford, three, no good. Good rebound from Sam Emmer. working the ball around the zone trying to find Lee in the post but Jackson Carlson with a good defensive play I love how they've got Dante inside there on that zone you know flashing to the high post as a guard I love playing out of that you know catching the ball looking to score or making a pass out of there that's a great spot for a guard to be Lee for three no good rebound by Davis Marion Davis will push the floor find Spears in the corner Marquise Lewis with the spin. He's going to get called for the travel. That's one of those, I'm not sure he traveled, but it looked funny, and sometimes an official, if it looks funny, they yeah. call it. I thought he kept his pivot foot, and he, you know, but I could be wrong, too. A little bit yeah, too. I could be wrong, too. Burlington's back, man to man, it looks like Joel. It's like when they're able to, to make a basket and get into their press, they go zone, and then after that, they stay in man-to-man -man if it's just a change of possession. Yeah, they seem to like to mix it up, don't they? Ember drives baseline, gets the foul. That worked out, but I think that pass was actually for <laughs> Luke Wieskamp, cutting to the basket, man, that basket cut, but uh, the pass went right to Sam. I don't know if you thought the same yeah, thing. Yeah, it, it was close. It was one of those two receivers in the same area, so you don't know who it's for. As Emmer makes the first free throw. It's three points now for the junior. Makes them both. Two big free throws. Yeah, if you want to get back in the game, free throws are so important. you got to make both those. Great job by Sam. Marion Davis, spin move. And it'll be musky ball. He's a quick jumper. Now Hufford will bring it up for the muskies again. Mark your calendars, February 4th, cake auction night. Here as Central DeWitt comes to town. A night at the movies is the theme. And the Muskies doing their best Hoosiers impersonation there. Good extra pass. Turnover. We got lucky there, Joe, but again, I, I, Dante ran by the basketball. You know, he, he thought he had a steal, but, you know, when you don't get it, that guy had an easy, you know, lane to the basket, and he turned it over, luckily. But uh, as a defender, I really like to see kids, you know, stay a little more sound not gamble as much. Emmert, strong take, missed, but rebounded by Davis. Marquis Lewis dives to the baseline, good feed. Outstanding and pass. One. Was that Spears that made that pass, number one? Or I, was believe, I, I think it was Spears. Yeah, that was a tremendous pass. I mean, you talk about trying to get kids to see the floor. Yeah. I mean, he had his head up, vision at the basket, and Lewis made a great cut. And a finish resulting in a three-point attempt here. Lewis makes the free throw. Now a timeout from Burlington. 30 seconds will keep it right here. You know, I know Davis is the leading scorer statistically, but a lot of the offense really runs through Lewis. 
he's really doing a nice job. I'm very impressed with him as a player. Just He plays under control. He's such a good athlete, and sometimes, you know, you get those great athletes that want to play too fast, out of right. control. But I really love how he plays under control. Yeah, you know, you want Burlington has a little momentum here, and they, they use that timeout. I don't know, Coach, if they want to change something up here or set their press maybe a little bit here. Yeah. I don't know. But, uh, you know, uh, we'll see here. Maybe there's some, they got something special they're going to run on offense next possession. or They're back in their little three-quarter court, one-two-two two trap. Muscatine, nice job breaking the pressure. Emmerich draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Get that ball to the middle and good things happen. Sam has been a facilitator out of there. He's done a nice yeah. job either getting the ball to the basket himself, he's finding the open area in the middle, or, or taking the ball strong himself and getting to the free throw line. Yeah, he's a kid who gets to the line a lot. He had missed most of the first half of the season, or first part of the season with a foot injury as he misses the first. Lewis reminds me a little bit of a the Seals player from North Scott a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, you know, he's got that length, too. Yep. You know, great length. Davis driving baseline again. Finds Spears for three. And splash. It's kind of how we started the game with Spears hitting a couple threes. Melendez in for the Muskies. This is a crucial time of the game for Muscatine. Got to get something good here on offense. Remember, That's a great drive by Sam. Got to just cut into this lead a little bit here in the rest of the quarter. As the ball is, as the foul is going to go against the Muskies. Definitely a foul. Just got too much body and arm. And Lewis just takes the ball so strong to the basket. He's so tall and long, it's going to be really tough to block his shot. I think you're better off just trying to either take a charge or just go straight up on him and see if he can score over the top of you. Lewis hits the free throw. That's a hard thing for kids to learn, though, you know, yeah, not to challenge every <laughs> shot, you know. And sometimes it matters who are you challenging, yeah. you know. There's certain guys you just, it's not worth it. As Lewis makes both free throws. Miles Melendez looks like he's in the game. Maybe give us a little spark on uh, on the defensive end and his leadership. Lee, strong take, unable to convert. As Lewis is in just in attack mode now. Yeah, they're just getting out too easy on us. You'll one pass and drive to the basket. We've got to do a better job of stopping that straight line drive to the hoop, getting back and covering up quicker. 17 point or, uh, 17 points for Lewis now a 20 point lead for the Greyhounds. Yeah, they've kind of just oh, grabbed a turnover. Miss layup. Carlson gets the rebound. And Carlson with the putback. That's a good lesson for young kids. You know, it looks like your teammates got a layup, you still run down cuz you assume everyone's going to be a miss. And yeah, Bettis Carlson did that. Missed the layup and Carlson was right there. I mean, that was wide open. I you know, I I was stunned when he missed it too. And right. Emmer steps on the line and turnover to the Muscatine. Well, as Martinez a, back. As in. a teammate, you hope they make everyone, but you got to assume everyone's a miss if you yep. want to be a good rebounder. Yeah, Burlington's just kind of assumed control of this game, Joe. We've got to do something here to change momentum. Davis with the offensive right. board and the putback. You know, he's a very impressive quick jumper. Yeah. He was off, he missed it, but he was off his feet again so quickly. East Camp draws the foul. Definitely a reach, an easy call by the official. Yeah, if, I don't know if, if Davis runs track, but if I'm the track coach of Burlington, that's that's a that's a long jumper. Good speed, quick burst. 
There's no more triple jump at the Iowa High School level, though. So. Emmert battling through. Were you a track guy up in Wisconsin? You know, I ran track in eighth grade, and I was a high jumper for about a week or two in high school, <laughs> and then I, I, I yeah. gave it up. I wish I'd have stuck with it. Needless to say, that was not my sport either. <laughs> Everett hits the first free throw. I enjoy coaching track. There seems like it's a great sport for kids and healthy. Yep. And there just seems like there's, you know, with the field events and all the running events and the relays, there's something for everybody, right. especially at the junior high. Everett, second free throw attempt is good. Those both look real good from Sam. He's getting to the line a ton tonight. He probably gets to the free throw line as, as much as any muskie because he's so aggressive. Martinez tried taking the charge. And the end one. Lewis is having a career night tonight. You know, and they're just, if they miss, they're following it, and they're just really aggressive around the, around the glass tonight. We've seen that happen two or three times here. And he makes the free throw. He's a really good free throw shooter, too. He is. He's up to 20 points, Joel. I don't know if that's his high for the year. Or... He's just a junior. Be interested to see. I think he projects probably as a player at some level. And the Muskies turn it over. It right? gets deflected. Yeah, we look like we're back on our heels just a little bit, Joel. We're just trying to find something to to the basket. 25 point lead now for Burlington. Nice curl by Braden on the out of bounds play. Boy, Jaime had a good look, but Davis really closed yeah. out hard and took that away. I mean, he had just a brief second. He usually, usually shoots that, but they did a good job uh, closing out there. I thought Braden might have been able to shoot that under the basket too. Martinez goes to the line for the three-point play. Tay, if Jaime can do that with his three, because he's a good three-point yeah, shooter, and if he, really he can is. complement that with drives to the basket like that, it'll make his uh, offensive game all the more dangerous. And he can really help Muscatine. Makes the free throw. Talk about a guy who's not afraid to challenge anybody. That's, that's Jaime Martinez. Melendez gets called for the foul. Yeah. A little ex extracurricular activity, Joel. Yeah, I missed that. You know, I it, I you know, he put two hands on him, but I don't think it was anything malicious. He, yeah. you know, he was being aggressive and two hands in the back. They're going to call that every time they called the foul. It should just be, that should have been the end of it. I think that was much ado about nothing, as they say, Joel. <laughs> Sam kind of came in there and was peacemaker there, you know, trying to, Make sure nothing got it escalated. Christensen will check in for Melendez. Hufford. I think Hufford had it clean. I think they're going to call Christensen for the foul. There will be two shots here for Davis. Davis showing a little bit of his athleticism there. They're throwing those alley-oops on the out-of-bounds. A little back screen. Throw it up above the rim, and, you know, he, he certainly went after it. Davis, the leading scorer, makes his 12th point of the night. He's averaging 14 points per game coming in. And Merkish Lewis leading the way with 20 for the Greyhounds. Emmert with the shot fake, has it stolen by Davis. And there's Jaime Martinez for three from First National Bank of Muscatine. Jaime's giving him a little spark here, and we need, we need that. Davis for three, and that's good. Good pass by Carlson. 
That makes it tough when they match it. You hit a big three and maybe looking to get a stop and get some momentum going, then they hit a three to kind of even it out there. And the Muskies will keep the ball. Good hustle by both guys. Just good sportsmanship. They both kind of got tangled up a little there. Okay. So now it'll be a Muscatine ball. Martinez with a shot fake. Passes deflected by Davis out of bounds. 39 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's a 23-point lead here for the Greyhounds. He's camp to Martinez. Martinez with the drive. Emmert with a strong take for two. Nice job avoiding the charge there, too. He avoided contact. Shot blocked by Wieskamp. I don't know if they're calling a, who they're getting for the foul. Yeah, I think it was a late, little late whistle, but I think he got him on the arm. Calling on Christensen. You know, this is reminiscent of a lot of the old Burlington teams where you have two or three really good athletes. Mm -hmm. Both the Davis and Lewis kid, you're used to seeing them with two or three of those guys every year. Yep. There was a stretch in here not too many years ago where they really ran out of those athletes, it seemed like. They, yeah. they struggled. I think they had a conference losing streak for several years. Yeah, they, they did. So, But I think they're back in business with those two guys. Yeah, they're 4-1 and one in the Southeast Conference, their new conference. 7-6 and six on the season. I believe in that Southeast Conference is Fort Madison, who is the number one team in Class 3A. Okay. Christensen gets his set fourth foul here. I'm not sure what the discussion's about. I think it was clearly a foul on Connor. Yeah. <laughs> I think he was saying he got fouled four. Oh, I don't okay. know, but yeah. And he, but Connor did just get a warning from the officials okay, well, to settle yeah, down. I, I, I don't know what happened prior to it, but I don't think there could be any question that Connor. Yeah. Connor, I mean, it was a pretty aggressive foul, too, but I think Connor's a little frustrated right now, and, you know, rightfully so. I know he just, he wants to, he wants to win. He wants to, he's always playing hard out there, and it's tough. Um, you know, a couple calls go against you. And just got to keep your composure out there. Connor's a great kid. He'll. Yeah. Lewis makes the first free throw. He'll be fine. There's .7 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Lewis Boy, makes the second know, free throw. You alluded to her earlier. Has he missed from the free throw line tonight? Maybe once. He's got one, one miss. miss. Almost, Sam Emmert almost makes the half quarter at the buzzer. You know, and, and you love a guy like him who gets to the line. It seems like he gets to the line a lot and then he converts, you know. But, yeah, I think you're right. One miss in the first half. But he's, he's made a lot of free throws tonight. He's got 22 points. We're going to take a short break as we bring you the fourth quarter on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. Hi, I'm Ashley, and I'd like to take a minute to talk to you about Pearl City Media. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pearl City Media understands that people And welcome back. It's the fourth quarter here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network, presented by Pearl City Media. I'm Joel Krausar, along with my partner, Coach Terry Jungbauer, as the Muskies had a really devastating third quarter there, and Burlington just extended this lead to 25. Well, Lewis and Davis are both out of the game, Joel, so let's hope we can make some hay, as Coach Murray used to say right now, and Jaime just did just that. Yes, Jaime Martinez. 
you know, slashing through gets the bucket. On the floor for the Muskies, Hufford, Emmert, Wieskamp, Martinez, and Lee. It's been a quiet night for Dante. Even though he's quietly got 11 points, it seems like they all came in the first half. I was going to say, I haven't remembered him scoring for a long time. He, got, he has three fouls as well. That's been a factor. He had to sit some minutes there in the third quarter. Burlington looks pretty content to just be patient here, Joel. They got a lot of subs in the game. Move the basketball around. Look for a good shot. Run a little clock. They're firmly in control of the lead. Walsh to Martin. That kid had a nice, nice first half. Here's Carlson, who's had a nice game. And gets the left-handed finish. And now Carlson with 12. Emmert will get to the free throw line. I'm impressed how much Sam is getting to the line with his aggressive play at the offensive end. You know, this is a, in this type of game, Joel, you know, are you going to come back and win? It's going to be very difficult with only 6.39 to go. But, you know, you just keep playing to get better. You know, there's a lot of season left, and you can't worry about the score. You just got to play each possession, try to get better. Don't worry about the score. Don't look at the scoreboard at all. Emmer makes the first. I think that's what Sam's doing, that's for sure. And I know all the other kids are doing the same. And I know the coaches are coaching that way, too. Martin inside the Walsh. Here's Bettishofer. No good. Rebound Lee. Long pass to Emmer. Sam gets the bucket. Love the pass from Dante looking over the top deep on that. A lot of kids don't do that. They catch and don't look down the floor immediately. And he Dante did a great job of that. Carlson, no good. Well, everybody kind of just stopped there. Yeah. I don't know if they were anticipating a whistle. Emmert gets the loose ball. It's getting a little ragged, Joel. Yeah. Hufford dribbles it off his foot. It'll be a turnover. Yeah, it was kind of funny. I don't know if everybody thought there was going to be a whistle because it, it, the, everybody stopped and yeah. the ball hit the floor. And... It's like bullet time there for yeah. the Matrix. <laughs> Martin brings it up the floor for the Greyhounds. Near turnover there, Joel. Like I say, Burlington just looks pretty content to kind yeah. of just run some clock, be patient on offense with, with this group. Emmert almost gets a steal. He knocks it out of bounds. Bryson Tate's now in for the Greyhounds, his first action of the night. You know, of the guys who play significant minutes here for Burlington, a lot of juniors. Yeah, that's encouraging for them. There's the senior Tice Burdishofer. He gets his first bucket of the night, or second bucket of the night. Oh, it was nice to see a kid come off the bench and a senior have a little success. And he makes the free throw. Dante Lee. Martinez gets the loose ball, and then he quickly turns it over. Here's Martin. No good. Rebounded by Martinez. Ooh, might have got away with a push off there, Joel. Yeah, a lot of contact being. 23 really extended the arm on that. Yeah, play's gotten a little bit ragged. Kids are playing hard. Both teams. Burgess Hofer has it deflected by Wieskamp. The Muskies take over. Martinez for three. 
And it's good. First National Bank of Muscatine three-pointer by Jaime Martinez. Reminded me of Iowa. They love to shoot those transition threes, you know. Yeah. Jaime would fit right in with them. And then Jackson Carlson. Showing off the biceps, the guns there yeah. after the three-point play there. But, you know, definitely was a foul, and he went through the contact. It's a different world. It is. I, In my day, guys would just go to the free throw line. They wouldn't, you know. You didn't have all the extracurriculars, and guys just kind of played the game. And it was a simpler simpler time, Joel. We weren't as flashy. And, and I'm not. I mean, and Carlson's played a fantastic game. I, I told I he have he, kids. He's, he's, he's done a great He's done a great job. I, I just, but, but in my day, you know, 22 years ago, that's when that's when you bring someone like me off the bench, oh, and, and, know, and next it's nothing dirty. But yeah, the you, next time he gets fouled harder and he doesn't get a you chance. Just, to yeah, lay you, you just didn't see that. <laughs> yeah. Kids just didn't do it. It was just kind of like you know. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong. I'm no, not. This is not an indictment on him no, at all. No, exactly. And it, it, it's Mark, more. It's just more the sign that at the times that's kind of the, the way. Dante Lee with the finish. Yeah, I played Joe back in the day. You know, when you you committed a foul, you had to raise your hand. Yeah, it was a technical right, foul if right, you didn't raise your hand. Right. I kind of like that rule, actually. I almost wish they'd bring that back. Bring some, you know? bring some accountability back, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Shun you a little bit when yeah. you foul, you know? I just raised it because I was proud. I was like, hey, that's right. Yeah. you're going to say my name. <laughs> I earned that foul. I got five of them. You get in the book, right? <laughs> some more subs in for Burlington, looks like, Joel. You know, these kids practice hard, and it's great to see kids... Get opportunities to get in games. And yeah, we'll see Caleb Bettis check in for the Muskies. That was Kashawn Luckett for the Greyhounds, who was bringing the ball up the floor. It is Emmert, Lee, Martinez, Bettis, and Thompson on the floor for the Muskies as Jaime Martinez will go to the free throw line. Bryson Tate, Kashawn Luckett, Juan Reyes. J.J. Martin and Dayton Walsh on the floor for the Greyhounds. This is one of those situations too, Joel. Remembering as a head coach, you know, you're always looking up. You're up 20 or 20, so, and the other coach is saying, "Put some getting here." Like, God, can they come back yet? You know, you're yeah. all so nervous. You know, yeah. do sub too early, too late. You know, late. There's no perfect way to do it. You know, but it is good, like I said, to see kids get opportunities. They practice hard, and when their time does come, to see them get on the floor and have some success and have some fun. I know people are always looking at the scoreboard, and I was asking coaches, get some subs in there, coach. And, but you just, you know, you just worry about things. You're doing the things. math. You're like, okay, yeah, that's you, how many yeah. possessions. You know, you're when trying they to... press and you worry about things, and I'm sure a lot of it's, you know, you shouldn't be worried about it, but you are as a coach. You're paranoid, Joel. <laughs> right. It's just part of the profession. Walsh skip past to Martin. I do know one thing. I was always thrilled for kids when I did get kids in the game or my coaches got kids in when they had success. Yeah. You know, yep. you were just thrilled. There is a three-pointer from Tate. It's a nice-looking shot from Tate. He's another junior, Joel. Melendez, Martinez, now Diamond Cray, he checks in. Darnell Thompson gets to the rim and finishes. Darnie's a finisher. He can get that ball to the basket and finish with some strength. Martin for three, no good. Rebound by Crahey. Now Martinez. Well, I was a little surprised to see Jaime hesitate. Yeah. That's off the Greyhound player, Great. so stay with the Muskies. Good call by the official. He was right on that. Just kind of trading baskets, keeping this lead at 20. Reyes with a nice defensive move to cut in front of that pass. Yeah, he had to play a little catch up there. Caleb had him beat. Would have been a nice, easy basket for Caleb if we could have converted that. Martinez to Melendez. Crahey to Thompson. Shot fake. Thompson hits the finish. The lefty. And 
learned he was a lefty this year, watching him play some quarterback for the Muskie football yeah. team. Yeah, he's a, he's a nice athlete. Very nice athlete. Sean Luckett with the step back three, no good. Darnell's got a little size advantage on him. Martinez for three. Good. Jaime Martinez with 15 points. Jaime is heating up. He's, we're going to have to call him the microwave. <laughs> Remember Vinny from uh, Detroit? The microwave. Another three-pointer from First National Bank of Muscatine. Timeout here. Substitution timeout. Tell you what, the coach standing up calling the timeout right now, Jeff Whiteside. Is that who that I thought that's uh, who and that you know, was? Jeff played on a great Burlington team that we beat to go to the state tournament. Um, tremendous player, had a great college career. Um, but yeah, I, I saw him walking in at halftime and and uh, wanted to mention that. Really a fantastic player. So that ball goes out of bounds. Luck it, tried to get to the rim and I believe he had a chance to, to win the game and missed a shot at the end after we had scored. We rebounded and Kyle Murray threw the ball up into the air and time ran out. Three point attempt by Jason Olmstead and now Thompson will get the layup. By McGrahey with the steal. And a foul by Walsh. Good sportsmanship yeah. by Walsh there, you know. Went up and patted Diamond on the back. Wanted to make sure there was no well, he's harm, under control. no intent. Yeah, it yeah. Was, yeah. It was I a, mean, he made a play on the ball, no question. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of contact. Diamond will go to the free throw line. And Diamond seemed to take no, offen no yeah. offense. That's what you like to see. Kids just playing hard and getting along out there. Makes the first free throw. Diamond kind of talked that one in, Joe, but I'd like to see him shoot with a little more arch. He's got a, he's really flat on his free throw there. He just barely got it over the front of the iron. Let's see how this one. A little bit better there. Makes them both. 66 I guess if it goes in, it doesn't matter, Joe, right? Walsh. Okay, Joel, this is where I talk about us subbing too early. We're, we're, at, we're down to 11, <laughs> 11 pretty quickly game, yeah. there, and if there was a little bit, another minute or two. Olmstead for three. I'm it's sure in good. the end, though, Burlington's just, you know, they want to come away with a win regardless of the score. Crahey misses the layup. Rebounded by Reyes. Olmstead for three. No good. Would have been exciting for that young yeah. man. He's going to get another look. Oh, almost in there for Jason Olmstead. You know. Another run the clock out. I, I think that's so neat. And I have to give credit to the Muscatine kids there a little bit. They, yep. were, they were giving them, you know, the open Re look. There. Recognize they, the situation. They, they kind of knew yeah. that they were trying to get a basket for this young man. And, you know, for them to, you know, Absolutely. realize that. And, and they were backing off there and giving them some looks. So that was, that was really nice sportsmanship on on both teams' part. So the Greyhounds defeat Muscatine 77-66. to We're going to take a short break. We'll be back to put a bow on this one on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself.
At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Card controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. And welcome back to the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. It is post-game show presented by Hy-V and the new Wahlburgers restaurant at Hy-V. Terry, you know, 77-66 is the final score. It really was all Burlington. A tough, tough outing here for the Muskies. Good opportunity for them to continue to grow. But, you know, it, there were some really bright spots tonight. We saw on the defensive end some uh, better uh, – Less foul trouble by yeah. the Muskies tonight. Yeah. Some better rotations, and that was evident with our Eastern Iowa Power Washers defensive player of the game, Luke Wieskamp. Four block shots and eight defensive rebounds tonight for for the young freshman. Yeah, Luke does a nice job, and I think that's part of his game that you know he doesn't get you know talked about much. Yeah. You know, and uh, like you say, the block shots are very important. And I like, like I indicated earlier, how he blocks a shot, keeps it in play, you know, and doesn't foul, doesn't fall through, you know, uh, on the arm or anything like that, and keeps possession of the basketball for Muscatine. So, yeah, that was that, that, that was nice to see. And they're our affordable metal manufacturing offensive player of the game. Who do you have for that? Jaime Martinez off the bench, giving Muscatine, what, 15 points? Yeah, 15 points off the bench for the senior. He was a nice spark there and, you know, shows what he's capable of doing. You know, he can score for the Muscatines, Muskies a little bit. And, you know, we've had some games where we've, we've had trouble scoring, so maybe he's a guy that can come off the bench and give us a spark. 77-66 was the final score. You know, it was really, we, we just talked about the Muscatine offensive player of the game, but Merkish Lewis Jr. for the Greyhounds, 22 points, you know, 11 points over his average. Just a, a spectacular junior there in the purple and gray. Uh, Going to be a, a really bright spot for at least another year yeah. for Burlington. I wonder, will we have Burlington on the schedule next year for non-conference? I think have so. to go there maybe? I, I think I hope so. We, I'd yeah. love to go down there for a trip. I, I miss that gym. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun rivalry. And the Greyhounds get the best of the Muskies tonight. We'll be back with more Muskie wrestling as we'll have a triangular with Davenport North and Bettendorf. Now, if you don't watch a lot of high school wrestling and you don't track a lot of high school wrestling, um, the Muscatine went to one of the better invitational tournaments this past Saturday. They're at the Jayhawk Invitational in Cedar Rapids, Jefferson. And Evan Frankie, a heavyweight, uh, was defeated in the championship match. Uh, he, so he took second. And the guy he beat him, uh, this just happens to be Ben Cuter from City High, who's the number one ranked heavyweight in the country. And he's going to Iowa to play uh, football as a linebacker slash defensive end and wrestle. So, hey, the, the so key, Evan Frank, he's got yeah. a lot to hang. He's got to be a lot to be happy about because he just, you know, got second place with the guy in front of him is one of the best in the world. Evan is one tough cookie. I'll tell you what, I enjoyed coaching him in football and he is just a fantastic kid. Great family, the Frankie family. And, and he's got a sister, Allie, who was a great kid I had it in school. And he's just a sophomore. Yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. he's a young kid. And, you know, that's one of the bright spots on this wrestling team with head coach Scott Mock. We'll have that those wrestlers in action. Bettendorf, one of the top teams in the state, going to be in action. So looking forward to doing that Thursday, and then we'll have girls basketball on Friday. Here. You, you mentioned the kid he lost to, the Keeter name. That's yeah. a name, too. I'll bet his father... Uh, there was a Keeter on the uh, Iowa City High basketball team that beat uh, Luke's father, uh, you know. It may have been. And, and Dan don't... Tharp and Brett Olson and, and that whole group. We played them in the sub-state championship. And uh, Brian Keeter was his name. He was a tremendous, and I'll bet it, It's entirely possible. Yeah, I'll bet, uh, but I'll I, bet that's I know that this young man is, uh, I follow wrestling uh, at the collegiate and world and, and high school level. Um, everyone wanted him to be a wrestler. And uh, he's staying in Iowa City, which makes sense. I mean, one of the best programs in the I, world. So I wouldn't – if it's not dad, it's got to be a relative. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. City High is a pretty uh, a tight-knit community up there on the southeast side of Iowa City. So we won't have them on Thursday. We'll have Bettendorf, which is another storied program, and Davenport North. Always fun. Looking forward to seeing those two teams come in the gym and then more hoops Friday. And then, gosh, we're almost to the end of January already. It's hard to believe. Hey, Bobby and I were so disappointed the game got called off last Friday. Bobby Long, yeah. we know you were out of town. Yeah, it was, was going to be the Bobby and T.Y. show. Well, I was going to be Bobby's sidekick. I is, enjoy being your sidekick, but I, you know, I coach with Bobby, and I've known Bobby, and so you know, I like being the sidekick. Well, and, I'm looking forward to the three-headed monster that will be yeah, February yeah. 4th, the cake auction. There you go. I'll just set it up the balls on the yeah. tee and let you guys well, knock them out of the park. You know, they say there's so much downtime in that game, but I don't have – 
I don't think we'll have any hard time filling the. I think, I think we need to figure we all out like, to like talk a little bit. Yeah, we need to figure out a movie trivia for that because okay. it is a movie theme. Okay, maybe we can get uh, Tony Tone, the school district uh, public relations director. He and I actually host a movie podcast together, so Fine. we can maybe get him on as well. Figure out some ways to, to fill the time, and most importantly, make a cake community. Send it into the cake auction. Have some fun, and we'll have more fun with you on the Pearl City Media Network. Big thanks to Chris Anderson and Jess, our director. They do all the hard work. We just make it sound good. So we appreciate you. Go Muskies, and good night, everybody.